the chair of the Cherokee Nation Gen Z Leadership Program. We are very grateful to each and every one of you that has joined us today in this whole, actually not only today, but this whole process. And we hope that you will be able to use these lessons in your life. Now, first I start everything I do with gratitude and I want to express my gratitude to Cherokee Nation for allowing us to share this information and share this leadership program with you. And in particular, I always like to acknowledge our principal chief, Chuck Hoskin Jr., who is our elected representative, and he is our principal chief. Now, a reminder, if you do want to receive a certificate for, of completion for this leadership program, you have to complete all six sessions. As I just indicated, this is week number three. So after today, we're going to be halfway done. So you have to complete all six sessions. And if you're not able to join us live and you need to make up a session, that's okay. You can view the recording. To view the recording, all you need to do is go to the Cherokee Nation Community and Cultural Outreach YouTube channel and watch it there. But after you watch it, you must make sure that you put your name in the comment section. That way we will know that you watched it and you'll get credit. The other thing I wanted to remind you, I understand there are some people that are calling in and that's okay, we welcome you. But if you're calling in, please put your name in the chat. The chat is working today. Please put your name in the chat or email Abraham. Abraham is going to put his email in the chat as well, because if you're calling him by phone, we don't know your name. So to, for you to get credit, we need to know who you are. So last week, we talked about integrity and respect. Today, we're going to be talking about being humble and confidence. Now, some people think you can't be humble and be confident at the same time. We're here to say you can have it all and you can be both humble and confident. So today's leadership lesson, leadership lesson number five, be humble, never boast, never think you're better than anyone else. A leader can be humble and confident at the same time. Now, humility is actually a great quality. Some people think that if you're humble, you're weak. It's not a sign of weakness. Humble, being humble and humbleness is very important. Now, last week, Abraham mentioned Crosland Field Smith. For those of you that don't know who he is, he is a Cherokee elder who shares the sacred Kitawa teachings. He is our spiritual leader. He actually comes from a long line of spiritual uh, leaders as his grandfather was someone known as Redbird. Now he actually has a book, his book, I'm not sure if you could see this, it's called stand as one and in his book sharing the history of our spirituality with Cherokees in his book stand as one he teaches us as Cherokees that we are connected we're connected to everything and everyone we're also connected to everything that's ever been past, present, and future. So once you realize that we're all connected, you realize that no one is better 
than anyone else. So yes, we are all different and that's okay. We are all unique. We are all special, but no one is better than anyone else. We're just different. So be humble and appreciate who you are and your special qualities. And do not compare yourself with other people. Now, I like to say that I am not trying to be better than anyone else. I'm just trying to be better than the person I was yesterday. So I actually compete with myself. I don't compete with others. Now, we all have our individual journey in our life and no one's journey is better than anyone else's. We're just all different. Now, I'm here to say that a job title or money does not define who you are, are, nor does it make you better than anyone else. Your character defines who you are. Now, I have been blessed in my career because I've had the job title of commissioner, I've had the job title of CEO, president, professor, but those are roles that I have in my life. They don't define me as a person. Those job titles just give me a certain set of responsibilities. Also, money doesn't define who you are and money, material things don't make you better than anyone else. Because just like job titles, money can go away. It doesn't necessarily last forever. I mean, we've all heard stories about millionaires that lose everything. So don't think just because you have a job title or money that you're better than anyone else. The beauty about life is you get to decide what success looks like in your life. Don't let anybody else decide what success is in your life. You might decide that for you, you define success as having a work-life balance, having a career, having a job, but also having time to have fun and have time for your family and friends. So success is defined by you, not by other people. So always remember that. Now, it's been interesting because over the last month, you know, on social media and in particular on Facebook, there has been some Cherokees, I'm sad to say, that think they're better than other Cherokees. They think they're better because they have more Cherokee blood or they live near Cherokee Nation or whatever it is. You know, for whatever reason, people feel like they want to feel better than other people. So they feel like they need to put other people down. And I'm again, I'm saying we're all equal. Now, when it comes to Cherokees, we may look a little bit different. We may live in different parts of the country. And we may even have different opinions. And that's okay because what we have in common is we all have Cherokee blood running through our veins. And where does that blood go to? It goes to our heart. So we all have a Cherokee heart and that makes us equal. None of us is better than anyone else. And I want you to remember that. And I want you to remember to always stay humble. So that is my lesson about being humble and humility. And from here, I'm going to turn it over to my co-facilitator, Abraham. Abraham, take it away. Hello, Cynthia. I appreciate it. Thanks for your words on humility. I appreciate that. So today, the second leadership lesson we're going to learn about is confidence. Um, this lesson dictates that a great leader strives for humility through keeping the ego in check yet remains confident when working toward the task at hand. And like Cynthia said, you can be both confident and humble. 
I know, um, you know, for a lot of years, I didn't think that you could be both. But the fact of the matter is that most people who are confident are humble because they don't need to boast. They're confident in their skills. They're confident in their abilities. And that means that they don't have to go and show off and or try to make a name for themselves and do those things. So um, you can be both. And they're actually um, two great attributes, you know, um, very powerful attributes to have as a leader. <clears throat> so today from this topic, there are three takeaways um, that I hope I would like for you to reflect on. Uh, the first is confidence is a choice. The second, confidence is a daily practice. And the third, be confident in who you are. And it is okay to be different. So let's look at the first one, confidence at, as a choice. So someone with confidence is choosing to operate with trust in themselves and their abilities every day. Everyone has things that they feel insecure about. Some days my negative thoughts want to make me feel less confident, but I use the tools that I've learned to reinforce my confidence. Um, you know, I've had times in my life, even times now where I'm doing um, public speaking, you know, and doing these type of presentations, I have negative thinking. You know, if I'm having a bad day, maybe I didn't sleep well, or, you know, I haven't been eating right, maybe I haven't been exercising, so I'm off my program. I'm not exactly in balance like I should be. You know, those negative thoughts can creep in and try and tell me I'm not good enough. Um, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm a fraud. You know, all of these things um, still come up in my life. But the fact of the, you know, the matter now is that I choose not to listen to them. I make the choice every day to continue to be confident and, you know, continue to practice the tools that I've learned. So that's one of the big ones that I just wanted, um, you know, to reinforce with you guys is, you know, don't get upset if you have bad days, if you still have some of those thoughts creep in that tell you, oh, you know, you're going to fail the test or, you know, you you get um, nervous when you're up, you know, doing public speaking or, you know, you're worried about what other people think about you. Don't even, you know, um, entertain those thoughts. You know, after a while, if you continue to practice this, they become boring, you know, and now that's how I am. When I get those negative thoughts, I'm like, you know what? These, this stuff is boring me. I'm not even going to entertain it today. I'm going to focus on my power, focus on my spirit, and, you know, do what I know how to do. I've done this before. I am confident in my abilities, and I know that I can pull this off. So the second one um, that I'd like for you to reflect on is that confidence is a daily practice. So I practice confidence by taking healthy risks. Um, you know, many of you may know, I think I told this story before, is I used to be deathly afraid of public speaking. I, um, you know, anytime I was asked to get up and speak in front of anybody, my knees would wobble, I would get really shaky, and I'd actually feel like I was going to faint. So what I would do is I suppressed my opinion, I would shy away from awards, and, you know, I really altered my lifestyle, and I altered some of the goals that I was seeking to achieve, simply because I didn't want to do the, the public speaking that, have, that went along with that. So what I did was I began to practice. Um, you know, I started by raising my hand in class. That was a big one. Um, and, you know, just every single chance I got, I would raise my hand and my voice would be shaky, but I would, you know, still make sure that my voice was heard. And then what happened was after a while, my voice was less shaky. Uh, I started to stand up straighter when I was speaking. I learned how to make eye contact when I was speaking. And then I was able to start to work on the content, you know, to get my thoughts in order. And slowly but surely, now I can speak to an auditorium full of people and I still get nervous. You know, I do, um, you know, some breathing techniques to center myself. I always pray to the creator. You know, if I'm giving a presentation on turkey culture or, you know, something I'm trying to pass along to our citizens, because I, you know, I just pray to the creator to get centered, you know, that I, I send a good message and that I'm able to help somebody. So. Those feelings still come up, but it's not like it used to be. You know, um, I'm really more confident in my speaking ability because I, I've learned to practice all the time. So um, that's the second one that I, I hope that you guys can um, take away from today is that, you know what, you don't have to be good at everything right now. That is totally OK. Um, it is, is OK to not be good at it, but continue to do it, continue working on it, continue practicing, and you're going to get there. Uh, number three is be confident in who you are. It is okay to be different. 
you know, this confidence in who you are makes it so that you can be at one with your spirit. Um, you know, a long time ago, I, you know, wanted to everybody to like me. So, you know, I would become somebody else and I wouldn't always act with, within my values. And I got away from what my spiritual purpose was. And, you know, that's something else that Crosland Smith talks about is that being at one with your spirit, you know, means in being in confident in who you are. You don't have to follow the crowd, especially if they're doing things you know are wrong or don't align with your values. It is totally okay to stand on your own. And that takes confidence to stand on your own, not have to follow anybody. Um, that is really the signs of, of a true leader. So it's scary, you know, and it, it takes a lot of courage, but I'm, you know, I'm giving you permission. You know, you don't have to fit in. You, you can be your own person. Um, you know, that is totally acceptable. You know, that's totally encouraged. And just know that you have the strength of our ancestors behind you. No matter what um, hard thing that you're going through in life, maybe you're having trouble making friends or whatever it is, don't change yourself to fit in with the group around you. It is totally okay, you know, for you to be yourself. And if you need help with that, you know, always reach out to, you know, whoever's in your support system, your friends, family, um, you know, people will understand we've all gone through this. We have all not fit in at some point um, in our lives. So we, we, we know what you're going through, but, you know, just make sure you have that confidence to, to stand on your own and, and live up to your values. So in conclusion, um, you know, what I want you to think about is, you know, just don't worry about others people's opinion of you. Uh, my Aunt Wilma was chief of the Cherokee Nation, Wilma Mankiller, and she told me once to never worry about what other people are saying about you. If you're out and you're in the public and you're trying to do something, people are always going to talk about you. All that matters is if you know what you're doing and you know why you're doing it. Um, so, you know, don't let the naysayers and don't let all these other distractions get in your way, um, you know, of you achieving your great your greatness. So, you know, do what you know is right. Be confident in your ability to make good decisions. Practice confidence by taking healthy risks. Um, and don't be afraid to fail. I've failed so many times, but I wouldn't be where I'm at today if I didn't take all of those healthy risks and continue to fail. So like Cynthia said, um, you know, you can be both confident and humble. And I hope that, uh, you know, these two lessons are able to help you in your leadership journey. So next week on March 34, 31st at four, uh, we are going to cover cooperation and patience. Um, so if you want to stay around for the Q&A, I welcome you. If not, if you have to go, then I say wado and uh, don't don't go hunting until we see each other again. So actually, Abraham, uh, I'm going to go off script here for a minute because I think, you know, confidence and humility are so important. I want everybody to practice it. So I want to do some positive affirmations. Mm -hmm. What are positive affirmations? It's really a way of reprogramming our brain because we get so much negativity. Mm -hmm. So I am going to ask everybody, sit up tall and strong and repeat after me. So, so Abraham, you could be the audience. I want you to repeat mm -hmm. after me. I am confident. I am confident. I am humble. I am humble. I am powerful. I am powerful. Ooh, yay. I felt that one. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I see everybody's putting their names in the chat. Thank you for that. But um, so now we're halfway through the program because if you don't wanna stick around, you're, you're welcome to leave. However, we do have some questions and actually some very interesting questions.